Kelsey Birdbrain, and today we are talking about storyboard. So, so far we've talked about the panels and the layers, and today we are going to transform our storyboard for interface to go from the drawing view to the timeline, because we're going to learn how to time our beautiful panels. So to shift from one view to the other, if you're more used to the software, of course, you can just go here, for example, and go call your timeline to get a timeline here. But I'm also going to show you how to navigate throughout different workspaces that can give you ideas of how to work. So here we have the drawing workspace, which is usually the default one. And here we have the timeline workspace, which is what we're going to see here. So it's normal that it takes a little while and it does that. It's normal. Don't be scared. And this is my timeline view. So here I have a timeline, which will allow me to time my panels. So usually the panel view is fun for drawing, but now that we have a bunch of drawings, we're gonna learn how to time them using the timeline. So the timeline has two main sections. There is the visual and the audio, which is why it's like A1 with a little speaker. We're not gonna talk about the audio for now, we're gonna concentrate on the visual. So I'm gonna give myself a bit more space here, just to show you this part by pulling on the little handles here. So to change the timing of your panel, just use the sides of your panel. So here, if you look, I have two different icons. This one, if I click and drag, it will push and pull the other panels. If I use this one, it will keep this one in place, but it will move everything after. Okay. If I'm satisfied with everything, but I want to change the, panel, the timing between these two scenes only, what I can do is just press on Alt, click here, and it will keep all my storyboard intact, but allow me to move just the timing between these two. I'm gonna do it here too, just to show you, like that. So you press Alt or Option on a Mac to do that. If you take a panel and you move it within the same scene, you can then reorder your panels. So you click and you drag, and you're gonna see that Storyboard Pro is gonna show you in a green bar where your thing is gonna land. And you can see here that my panel has a one on it because I only have one panel selected. If I had multiple ones, which you can select by pressing Ctrl to select ones that are far away from each other, or you can also click and then shift click to select multiples like that. If I were to move them, now I'd have a three because I'm moving three panels at the same time. All right, so if I, if I take these two and I decide that they go at the end, I can click and drag them, keeping them within my scene. You see here, the green box, the green line thing is still inside my scene. So if I drop them, I'll have these panels at the end. But what if I took these panels and I wanted to create perhaps a new scene with them instead of this being part of the same scene? You can do that by right clicking. And in there, there's lots of little options you can find. Uh, there is either a new scene from selected panels or a new sequence from selection and stuff. So I'm just going to make a new scene from selected panel and then I have a new scene. Another thing you could also have done is to take these two panels, take them and pull them out of your scene and drop them. And what it's gonna do is it will leave a gap within your shot, which is great if you want your shot to breathe. Maybe there's like a flashback and then it goes there, or I don't know. The fun thing you can do with these is you can take your panel and here you have the opacity. And the fun thing is that you can animate the opacity. So I'm seeing this for maybe someone who knows a bit more about the software because we didn't talk about layer animation for now. So I'm gonna do it briefly. If you click here, there's a plus sign. So you're gonna add a keyframe to your opacity. And if you go to the end of your panel, you can maybe lower the opacity like this, and then you're gonna have something that disappears. Um, another thing you could have done is take this, and let's say that you wanna keep most of it like that, but you wanna split the timing here. You can right click, and you're gonna find split panel at current frame, which will then split your panel in two. It's kind of like duplicating, but instead of creating another panel far away, like duplicating would do, which is what I'm gonna show you right now, by right clicking and duplicating my panel, it's adding a new one. Whereas when you split, it's keeping the same timing but splitting this thing in two. All right, so that's also what you can do. A fun thing you can do with the timeline view is to animate layers in your timeline. So I'm not gonna cover that today because it is a science of its own, but what I'm gonna show you is at least how to animate your camera, brief, like the fundamentals of your camera. So speaking of camera, in Storyboard Pro, you have two main views. You have the camera view, which shows you what your camera sees. You can use these little buttons here to use a mask. Or here in Storyboard Pro 20, we have a little grid option that can show you a rule of third. We also have these little overlays that can be useful for you. And we also have the stage view. 
So the stage view is usually like how where it's, it's where you see your scene from far away. Like if you're working with 3D, this is where you're gonna move around in 3D. But this is really what your camera sees in the camera view. All right, so that's what I'm gonna use to move my camera. To move your camera, very simple, you use the camera layer here. So it's not like Harmony, you don't have like a billion pegs in your timeline to animate. You have a camera layer and then you have the layer row here. And this will change depending on what layer you have selected. So this is a bit more complicated. I'm not gonna cover that today. I'm covering the camera. So I'm gonna go here. And if here I want to start zooming on my bird, I'm gonna press on plus to add a keyframe. And then perhaps I'm gonna go here and add another keyframe. So here we have two keyframes. To navigate from one keyframe to the other, you can just do this. Clicking, clicking on the arrow. And then if I want to move my camera, I'm just going to go click here on the camera button. You can also be more personal with the timing by going to the tool properties of your camera button. And you have some ease in, ease out. So I'm just going to write like two seconds of ease in and two seconds of ease out to have a better timing. And that's what I would have. To make my scene play, I'm just going to go here and press on the play button. If you want your sound, don't forget to use the little speaker here. I don't have sound, but you know, just in case. There you go. You have a beautiful camera movement in your scene. Note that it is very important to separate your project into multiple scenes. Because if you just use one big scene with many different panels, doing your camera movement will be hell. Because the camera resets every uh, scene you do. So it helps. Like if here I'm zoomed and I create a new sequence or a new scene, the camera resets to zero. So it really helps in your movement. Alright, so I hope you had fun and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye!